Uh, we'll go back to the quarterback now. And I'd love to get your take on this because being there and obviously we knew these some of these guys weren't going to throw. They weren't going to work out. And starting with Caleb Williams, um, there seems to be a lot of – I don't know if it's negativity or question marks about Caleb Williams. Um, what did you think about his approach? I thought, you know, when, when he was at the press conference, when he was around, he was very impressive. But I understand, too, him saying, you know, I'm not going to do 32 medical exams because I'd be shocked. And I'd love to hear your opinion if the Bears don't take him. So he kind of knows where he's going, at least. But what was your takeaway kind of and, and your overall view of the Caleb Williams situation and maybe some of the uncertainty at least those of us in the media and others have over uh, what he's going to be like once he gets in the NFL yeah I mean I, I knew I knew it was bound to happen that his his character and everything he said and did was going to be highly scrutinized after the the 2022 season it was an incredible year he wins the Heisman Trophy he comes back you know with eligibility left and you know had kind of put himself in that Trevor Lawrence Andrew Luck discussion as far as you know can't miss type prospect of course, didn't play nearly as well, I don't think, although, you know, extenuating circumstance with that offensive line, the defense, and, and everything that, that USC was up against. So, you know, there were some factors to, to help kind of explain it. But then, you know, everybody ha had an opinion on his attitude or his personality or his leadership quotient or whatever. And, look, it's so hard in even in brief combine meetings to determine that, much less – you know, spend a year with a guy like, for instance, Cliff Kingsbury, you know, last year was with him. You know, I think he has a pretty good feel for, for whether Caleb's a true leader or not and is, is communicating that to, to the commanders. We'll see if they're in the mix at all. But, um, yeah, the other teams are still doing that process now. They've they've watched him in person. They've spent time around him. But really, you know, for a lot of teams deciding on quarterbacks, it's going to be that two day visit or two or three day visit that they often take. And, you know, I felt like Caleb was taking agency over his draft plan, if you will, and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of slimming down the pool, knowing that, you know, if he if he falls, it's to number two, right? It's not that far. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he can be a little more choosy and a little more picky with it. And, and I don't really see a problem with it, right? I mean, you're, you're taking a risk. If, if teams truly are irritated by anything that he does or Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors or anybody else who – you know, opted out of certain portions of the combine. Well, they have to know that there's a risk that comes with it. And I have no problem if they're understanding. Now, look, I mean, Caleb and Marvin don't have agents. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, you, you wonder how much of that they're aware of. But I'm with you. I think he's a smart kid. And, and you know, there he's he's got a a personality that comes off as a little different to some people. But you know, I, I don't see any reason at this point, like you said, to, to, to not think that the Bears aren't, you know, dead set on, on taking him or very much in the, you know, in the camp of, you know, Williams until proven otherwise. So right. that's kind of where I stand and that's where I would guess they stand. But um, there is still a process here. They have to decide, mm -hmm. can we hand the keys of the franchise over to him and, and trust him as a uh, as a pillar of the team?